Hey, what's up? This is Josh from Keep It Techie, and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys how to set up a web server on Ubuntu 18.4 using LAMP Stack. So first off, let me explain what LAMP Stack is. It's basically a group of software when put together creates uh, the web server. Um, and it's actually an acronym. The L stands for the operating system, which is Linux. The A stands for Apache, which is the actual uh, web uh, software. The M stands for MySQL, which is the database uh, that works with the uh, web software as well as the p it stands for php which is basically a server-side scripting language uh which is a, allows you to um, create php pages that that work on the server and so you need that application installed as well so the server can interpret uh what php is saying so so with that being said i'm going to go through and show you guys how to set up uh, a LAMP server on Ubuntu 18.4. It's a pretty simple process. I'll go through and do a little configuring so you guys can see how to how to set it up and and start serving out websites. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is log into the server. Um, I have the server up and running in a virtual box. Um, it's running headless, so I'm gonna just connect to it using SSH. Um, this is a fresh install. I installed. Uh, you went to 18.4 and the only thing I installed was SSH and I enabled it and started the service. So I already checked to make sure I can log into it. So before I did this, started this video. But. Okay, so first thing you want to do is uh, type sudo apt updates. And that's basically so you can update all the um, repositories, make sure there's no new packages out there that need to be installed or any changes. Um, and as you can see, all packages are up to date. So the first step is to install um, Apache. So we go sudo apt install uh, Apache. And the package is actually Apache. I'm gonna tab it so you can see Apache 2. So uh, you want to just press enter on that and it'll go through and install a pack Apache. Uh, press Y for it yeah, for yes, I want to install this. And it will gather all the packages and basically do the install. Okay, so now that we have Apache installed, um, the first thing you want to do after installing it is open up the firewall. That way you can test to see if it's uh, working or not. By default, all ports are closed or most of the ports are, no, all the ports are closed. Um, the only port I have open right now on the server is port 22, um, but we'll go down and uh, open up the port so the web server can work. And basically what you want to do is they have built in um, profiles for different applications um, in uh, UFW, which is uncomplicated firewall. Um, it's a program built in that manages the firewall. Uh, so we can just type in sudo UFW uh, app, 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 and then list. And this will list out the applications. And as you can see, they have Apache, Apache Full, and Apache Secure. Uh, I'm pretty sure Apache is just port 80, and then Apache Full should be 80 and 443, and Apache Secure should be just 443, uh, just for uh, SSL cert. Uh, if you have that installed on your server, you can uh, set it up where you use port 443 by default. And all web servers, uh, the default port is port 80, 
you never really see it because it doesn't show up. Uh, it's like automatically known that port 80 is the, the port for the URL. So when you type in google.com, you don't have to put the port behind it because it automatically knows that it's 80 or 443. Uh, depending on if it's secure so that's why you don't see the port number but since uh like i'm on cox or something um it doesn't allow port 80 to be hosted from your uh, server um or from your home network it doesn't allow port uh, port 80 it blocks port 80 so you can't host uh web servers from your house on port 80 but you can use any other port in order to host the website you just have to remember to type in that port because your browser won't know so anyway uh, I'm just gonna do the normal uh, full uh, just for this demonstration so it's basically sudo um, ufw uh, allow uh, I think in and then or Allow, yeah, allow in. I'm sorry, and then we can put that in quotes. Up Apache, uh, and then full. And press enter on that, and it will add that rule to it. So that's pretty much it. So um, now I want to test it. Let me just test it, just so you guys can see. But the web server should be up and going right now so if we type in the IP address of this server which we, I know the name of the IP address is yeah 129 so if we go to up here and type in the IP address press enter and it should bring up the Apache page it's basically saying that your web server has been set up properly and you're good to go Okay, so now that we have Apache installed, the next step is to uh, go in and install um, MySQL. So the command to install SQL is basically the same as Apache, sudo apt install um, MySQL, and it should be dash server. Yep, dash server, and press enter on that. Type in our password, press enter. And we'll go through and install everything in these for all the packages and all that stuff for MySQL. Press Y for yes. And wait for it to finish installing. Okay, so now that we have uh, MySQL installed, we need to do a little configuring to it um, by running a simple script. It's a security script that allows you to uh, kind of harden your MySQL server by getting rid of some dangerous defaults that are built into MySQL. So it's a simple script and you basically run sudo, sudo, MySQL. And then hit under, uh, underscore. Um, sorry, secure installation. So if you press enter on that, it'll go through. It'll ask you what your password is. Obviously, because you're running sudo. And then here, it will ask you to validate uh, your password plugin. Um, and what this does is makes make sure you have strong passwords on your MySQL server. So you can press yes on this. I'll press yes. Uh, press enter on that. <clears throat> and it will ask you uh, 
the type of passwords you want. And zero is low, one is medium, two is strong. And I'll just do medium just for this purpose, but that'll work. And then it'll ask you for a password. Press enter on it. And then it'll ask you if you want to proceed. And it'll actually, it'll just actually show you the strength of your password. So I just put, put a Y there and press enter. All right, and what it says right here, by default, a MySQL installation has an anonymous user, allowing anyone to log into the MySQL server without having to have a user account created. And what we want to do is enable, disable that. So by pressing Y, we can disable that. And then also the next one, it says, normally root should only be allowed to connect from local hosts. This ensures that someone cannot can I guess the root password from the network? So do yes on that as well. And then remove test database. This will just remove the test database that's built in when you first install MySQL. So you type Y on that as well. Press enter. Uh, reload privilege table now and press Y on that. It'll uh, reload that table. Press yes. And now the security script is done. Okay, so now that we ran that script, uh, the next thing we need to do is modify a table within the MySQL database that uh, controls the authentication uh, method. So what we need to do is log into the MySQL server by typing sudo mysql, press enter on that. And now we can run commands. Uh, we give you tables and all that by running uh, uh, SQL statements. Uh, so I'm gonna start out by doing a select, uh, which will show us the table that we're trying to modify in order to, um, you know, just make sure we modifying it correctly. Uh, so authentication underscore string. Comma, plugin, and it's okay if you don't understand SQL. Uh, they have this this uh, information out there uh, in certain tutorials on showing you how to set up MySQL. So don't worry about it. They got step by step procedures. You can copy and paste the um, commands in. I just happen to know a few of them by heart. Um, but it's basically select case. It's basically going to select. Uh, these columns from this table and then at the end of your SQL statement you always want to put a semicolon so press enter uh, and I think I spelled something wrong let's see authentication yes I spelled it wrong yeah, and that's one thing about uh, SQL it kind of doesn't tell you what happened I mean what what's wrong I mean it'll tell you what's wrong with it well, yeah, in this case, it does. It tells you it's, it's an unknown column. So uh, we know that we spelled that wrong. But in some cases, the errors are not, you know, it doesn't really point you to where you messed up at. So you got to kind of look through, you know, each um, each word and make sure everything is spelled correctly. But anyway, it's spelled correctly now. So let's press enter. All right. So as you can see, it shows you the authentication method or the plugin it's using off socket. That's what we want to change. And and the way you change that is by running another SQL statement, which is alter. Uh, then we want to do user and then uh, root. And single quote local host. Uh, I identified with my SQL underscore native underscore password. 
um, by and then what we want to do is create a password for it. you can use the same password as your root account or make something stronger whatever I'm gonna just make something up because I don't think my user account is good enough password is good enough and then we want to always end the statement with a semicolon and press enter and that should work and it says Quir query okay zero rows affected it should have affected it I think it's changed it I think it changed it auto user identify with that query okay zero rows affected uh, zero seconds so uh, the way we could check to make sure it ran properly we can run that same command that we ran at the beginning which is the select case um, or select and make sure and as you can see is using mysql native password and if you change this password to something else or whatever uh, to like satisfy your mysql uh, settings that you set up um, that plugin that we set up during the script um, and you had to change it to something a little harder or whatever make sure you copy that and paste it somewhere that way you know it uh, because you're gonna need it when you install store like installing web apps like WordPress or something like that you need to know what the root account is so WordPress can contact the MySQL server create all the tables that it needs to create and all that good stuff so now that we've done that, we can exit out of MySQL. So it's basically the command to get out of it is basically exit, just like uh, getting out of uh, the terminal. So cool. So I'm going to clear that out. So in order to install PHP, we basically type sudo apt install uh, PHP. And what I want to do also is install a couple helper pa helper packages. Basically, they um, help PHP uh, work with the Apache server that we already have set up, as well as talk to the MySQL database um, by installing these other two packages. So it's basically lib um, Apache two. Apache 2 mod uh, PHP. Yeah, do PHP. And then uh, PHP dash MySQL. There we go. And we want to install those three packages and press yes. So in order to verify that PHP is, is running on the server, uh, we can create a file uh, in the actual default directory of the Apache server um, with some PHP code in it just to test it out. So uh, what we could do is sudo nano, um, and then we the default directory is var www.html. Uh, and then we want to create a file called info.php and press enter on there and this will allow us to modify it so um just put some basic code in there some basic php um, uh, php and then uh, what is it php info say that press yes enter now if we go to the web browser let's open up another one and we go to that IP address what is it 192 168.10.129 and then we go on to do forward slash info dot php and press enter it should bring up what version, you know, and all the information on uh, PHP on our server. And uh, 
You can get rid of this file after the after, uh, but this just it basically pulls all the information uh, and basically show you that PHP is is working on the server. So you can start writing a bunch of PHP code, create your website, uh, and all that good stuff. So uh, let's press the enter. I mean, let's close that. And now we have a working um, web server. And like I said, the default uh, directory for the server is the for www forward slash HTML folder. So uh, you can install, I don't know, Joomla, uh, WordPress, all that good stuff. Um, but like I said, you gotta make sure you have that MySQL password for the root account, or you can create one specifically for uh, that website. Uh, if you're gonna host multiple websites on there, uh, but the root is is fine. You know, you can use just the root account. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was kind of long, uh, but if you have any questions, please please leave comments down below. And if you like the video, please uh, hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends if, if you know they're interested in Linux. But other than that, just keep it techy.